Hello guys, my name is Anna and I am from Ukraine. I dream that the day when it is safe to come to Ukraine comes soon, but before that there are lots of places and things that I want to show you. The history of my country is really long. The history of my native city, Lutsk, is close to 1000 years. There are many beautiful and interesting places that I want to show you in my city. But as we talk a lot about the communist period and Soviet occupation, I have decided to take you on a small city tour chasing Sovok. Sovok is the slang name that we often use to identify the Soviet period. And let's try and see the traumas that this regime left on the face of my city. I think this episode will be very interesting for those of you who come from ex-Soviet republics and also for those who have never been to the Soviet Union. Soviet Union was known for communism, for records, but never for style. Similar monuments, similar buildings all over the huge monstrous empire. Behind me you see a very typical monument that has a name – Glory to Labor. It is located in one of the dull industrial districts of my city, between the electric plant and the plastic plant, that were constructed in the Soviet period. Today many people jokingly call this monument Slavic, because this is a typical name for a person and it reminds of the word Slava, which is glory in Ukrainian and many of you know that when you say Slava Ukraini. But in Soviet Union it was glory to labor. And he is a typical representative of the working class worships during communist period, but at the same time I do not remember good living conditions or salaries for the people who were like the one on the monument. Look how gigantic he is! Soviet Union was crazy about sizes. It was not about the artistic beauty of the monument, it was about how big this monument is, symbolizing the new communist person looking back in the sky with an electricity in his hand. Communist standards, vision of communist future was unrealistic and that now thousands of such abandoned monuments are standing all over the territories that were once occupied by Soviet Union. Let me know, are there similar monuments in your cities? Today we have come to the Memorial of Eternal Glory in my native city, Lutsk. Many of you who live in ex-Soviet republics can recognize a similar place. And it is a symbol of both our victory in the Second World War and also of the years of our Soviet occupation. Now you can clearly see, despite Russian propaganda messages, that everything is fine with memorials of eternal glory in Ukraine and in Western Ukraine. We take good care of these places and commemorate millions of Ukrainians who died as a part of Soviet army. But at the same time, this style, typical for every Soviet city, demonstrates that no creativity was possible even in important eternal places. Behind me you can see a huge monument to the motherland, and it looked similar in Lutsk, in Kyiv, in uh, Yekaterinburg or other cities all over Soviet monster empire. Only after the start of this full-scale Russian war in Ukraine, the star disappeared from the monument behind me. And it is an important internal ideological victory, because the number of victims of communist regime is equal, if not outnumbers, the number of victims of Nazi regime. And we have to remember, any totalitarian regime is evil. 
have a question to my friends and subscribers from ex-Soviet republics. Can you find some Soviet leftovers on your memorials of eternal glory and how do you deal with that? Because for example, right here we can see an inscription which says glory to the great Soviet people, people victorious. And we remember there is no Soviet people. If you have doubts, go check our Soviet myths debunked. Behind me is a monument to the unknown soldiers. Many of them remained unknown since the end of the Second World War. And I remember this place since my childhood, as my parents took me to put flowers every 9th of May to commemorate millions of Ukrainians who died as a part of Soviet army. One of the greatest scenes that continues to circulate in modern media is the myth that victory in the Second World War belongs purely to Russian. Putin uses this as a propaganda technique, persuading that he, or actually Russian people, were the saviors of the world. But this was definitely wrong. This was the unity of allies, where many other nations played an important role. And we are very grateful to our allies from the Great Britain, the United States, France. Many Ukrainians died on the battlefields of the Second World War. Actually, every fifth soldier that was hero in Soviet Union was Ukrainian. Since my school years, I was always interested why the rest of the world celebrates the Victory Day on the 8th of May and Russia and many post-Soviet republics had a tradition to commemorate it on the 9th of May. I thought maybe time difference or something else, but I believe this is once again a propaganda technique to demonstrate this difference, to separate itself from the rest of the world and to stress that victory belongs only to Russians, which is not true. And this is the monument I visit every time I pass by our memorial. This is a modern monument and a grave to a hero of the Heavenly Hundred who died protecting democratic values during the Revolution of Dignity, Vasil Moisei. He comes from our region. He was young, he was brave, but he died heroically protecting our future and our European choice. As many others, he died heroically protecting Ukraine and its European future. You have to remember that when you doubt if we belong to the family of the EU countries. Many students, many brave young people who had all of their life ahead, decided to die protecting the future of my country. And it is actually said that a memorial that could have been an old park giving us some memories and sentiments about the period of the Second World War turned into a modern cemetery. And by the way, this is the information I do not like thinking about, but I have to as a Ukrainian. The size of graveyards and military graveyards especially is growing really quickly around every Ukrainian city. Because the longer this war continues, the more beautiful people will lose. And of course, I'm not talking about Russian orcs. <laughs> Yeah, another important symbolic ideological victory took place on many memorials all over Ukraine. We changed the numbers just to numbers that change a lot. Instead of 1941, we have 1939, and that is important because World War II the second started in 1939, despite a popular myth of Soviet propaganda and now Russian propaganda that it all began in 1941, not as the Second World War, but as a great patriotic war. If you want to know more about this, check our Soviet myths debunked video on the Soviet propaganda myths about the Second World War. Imagine your city celebrates its 900th anniversary. 
and Soviet government decides that it needs to congratulate the city with its ancient anniversary. And it needs a present. And it brings a plane. Civil aviation plane constructed at the end of 50s was brought here in the 80s to commemorate 900th anniversary of Lutsk. I don't know if you see any connection, but bringing planes, tanks, other vehicles as monuments to the Soviet cities was a very popular practice that did not have any connection to the reality, to the date they were commemorating or to the style in general. This is a typical sleeping district, as we call them. Behind the plane you can see an average building where families live and they see this beautiful monument to an aviation. I don't know what is the message behind that. Maybe Soviet Union saw planes, tanks and other vehicles as something prestigious. Some people feel nostalgic when they see monuments like that. I personally feel just the absence of style and any connection between the monuments and the places they are in or the memories that they want to awake in us. Let me know, are there any similar Soviet monuments left in your cities? And if you want to know more about Ukraine, Russian crimes and all Soviet myths that still fuel Russian military machine, subscribe to my channel, Anna from Ukraine.